NASA scientists are busy completing the final checks on their next mission to Mars. A new spacecraft set to blast off to the red planet tomorrow, exceptionally from the west, from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. Uh, and take a look at the payload there, the InSight robotic lander. I don't want to tell you too much more about this, just this will get you thinking about what it's going to be doing because someone who knows much more than I about these issues is with us this morning, our science commentator and your host for Quirks and Quarks on CBC Radio. Good morning, Bob McDonald. Good morning, Heather Hiscox. Any reason to get you in to talk about space, and here it is, and we have a good one because <laughs> NASA's been to Mars before, of course, but not for six years and never quite like this. What's different about this trip? Well, Heather, this is the first time that we're going to Mars to look at it on the inside. Everything else that's gone to Mars in the past, there's been a whole fleet of robots, have been looking at its surface, and that's great. We know the surface of Mars better than we know the surface of the Earth. But this is the first time that we're going to probe inside to see what it's like. So we're going to put our ear to the ground with a seismometer to see if it's ringing inside. We're going to basically stick our tongue in it to see if it's warm in there. And we're going to watch it wobble, all to try to find out whether Mars is soft on the inside or hard. Uh, we know what it's like on the outside, but not on the inside. So it's the first time we've ever done that. So, so a deep dive. And, and as we look at the animation here, Bob, of the lander, this InSight lander, tell us a little bit more about, because they're going to be looking at things like Mars quakes and things like that, what they're specifically going to be studying as they look below the surface. Well, the, uh, the lander is not going to move. It doesn't have any wheels on it. It's going to sit very still. In fact, they want it to be very, very quiet when it sits on the surface. And it has a robotic arm that's going to pick up a couple of instruments and put them on the ground. So one of them is a seismometer that, uh, that is very, very sensitive to any motion from the ground, either from Mars quakes, which are the equivalent of earthquakes, to see how geologically active it is. And also, when it gets hit by something, Mars gets hit by meteorites more than the Earth does because its air is very thin. So they get right through to the surface. And every time there's an earthquake or a Mars quake, the, the waves that go through the planet give you an idea of what it's like on the inside. We do this with the Earth. That's how we know that the Earth has a liquid core in the middle is because of seismometers that watch earthquakes go right through the planet. Then there's a probe that's going to dig its way down. It's going to actually hammer its way five meters down into the ground, they hope, and actually measure the temperature below the ground to see how much Mars is losing its heat. Because Mars, unlike the Earth, is cold. It's small. It's smaller than the Earth. So we know that the Earth is warm on the inside with a crust on the outside that's cracked. And our crust moves around, and that gives us earthquakes and volcanoes. We're very alive. The Earth is very alive. Well, Mars doesn't do that. It started out doing that, but because it's small, it lost its heat early on, and its plate tectonics stopped. So what we want to know is how active is it today? Is it totally dead or is there still a little bit of activity going on in there? And that's why they want to look inside the planet to find that out. It's interesting, always the parallels to Earth, because in studying Mars, we often learn about our own planet. In this particular case, what might scientists discover about Earth? Well, Mars and Earth and Venus and Mercury are all terrestrial planets. They, are, they all formed in similar ways. Uh, we're, we're all rocky, unlike Jupiter, which is big and gassy. So if so far, we've only had one planet to look at that's our own. So if you can compare it to another one, you find out about how planets come together and how they lose heat, because eventually the Earth is going to lose heat and our volcanoes will go quiet. And when that happens, we're going to start to lose our atmosphere like Mars did. Mars has volcanoes, but they went quiet. And volcanoes are already always replenishing the air every, every time the stuff comes out. So that happened on Mars. Mars' atmosphere leaked away into space. Eventually, that's going to happen to the Earth. We'd like to know more about that process. And there's one other thing that I find interesting about looking at the heat inside Mars. If it's still warm today, if we want to find life, we haven't found anything on the outside of Mars. Maybe it's inside. We got to get into caves. We got to look underground. Maybe that's where it is. Maybe there are hot springs. But until we know how warm it is in there, we don't even know if those things could even exist. It's so interesting that you should talk about volcanoes when we're talking about Kilauea and this massive eruption on the big island of Hawaii today. Just very much illustrates exactly what you're talking about, what Mars no longer exactly. does. Uh, it's interesting. Right. One other thing to watch today is Canadian involvement. There is Canadian science heading up on board that, uh, that rocket and involved in that lander. 
And it's not the first time. Canada's been involved in a lot of these missions to Mars. We've sent weather instruments there. Uh, we've had scientists. We've, we've had instruments that can look at the rocks and do the chemistry of the rocks. Canada has always been involved. We build instruments and we give scientists to them. So there's a Canadian team from the University of British Columbia that's working on that seismometer to actually be listening to it. So Canada's part of the space program. We always forget that. And uh, we, we become partners. And these missions are international. Germany's also involved in this. They're international missions which is what space exploration is all about. It's planet Earth invading Mars, if you like to think about it that way. <laughs>